Okay, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Okay, we're just doing a, um, a follow-up video from the last one where I'll just go through the approach I took for, for making up the radio here um, and some of the design decisions I guess, I guess I made and I'll say right or wrong. I'm no expert in this. Um, I said that many, many times. Uh, this is just the world according to me and like I say, right or wrong, this is what I did. Okay, so what we'll do, um, I'm just going to briefly run through, like I say, what I did um, from left to right. So we'll start with the bandpass filter here. So um, as I mentioned in the last video, I elected to use a, a Butterworth filter there. Let me just zoom up a little bit there. Um, and I used uh, an N equals 2. So this is the configuration here. Uh, two main uh, parallel resonance circuits here with a coupling capacitor C12 uh, and two capacitors at the end that were used to transform uh, the impedance, as we'll see in the calculations, uh, out to 50 ohms for the uh, the source and the uh, the load resistance there. Now, for the, the various calculations, um, I I did this all in a, a spreadsheet. I got old Google, um, what's it called? Google spreadsheet up, whatever it is called, uh, and had all these calculations down here in a spreadsheet. So it made it nice and easy just to plug the numbers in uh, and spit out the various uh, numbers here. Uh, I'm not going to go into the derivation of these. These are a stocks, I understand, stock standard Butterworth filter um, uh, formulas, uh, but I'll just, I guess, run through the approach I took. Now, you do need, as a starting point, to know what your inductor is and what the unloaded Q is for that particular inductor. What I elected to do, just using some guidance out of the uh, solid state design for the radio amateur, looking at um, some of the filters that were used for both the 80 and the 40 meter band, I elected to use an inductor uh, 20 turns on an FT68-6, which turns out to be 1.88 microhenries. Now for the unloaded Q there, um, I'm going to use uh, this, it's the frequency of oscillation divided by the minus 3 dB bandwidth um, for that particular parallel circuit. So I'm going to choose uh, a resonant frequency which is halfway uh, in the in the band. So that band is 5.9 to 6.2 megahertz. So I'll just use 6.04. I think 6.045 is more accurate, but close enough. Um, and then, as we know, our frequency of oscillation for this particular circuit here, that resonant circuit there, is one of the two pi root LC. So we know what our inductor is because I said it was 1.8 microhenries. We know what our frequency of oscillation is, 6.04, therefore we can derive our capacitance by rearranging that formula and coming out with 368 picofarads. And what I elected to use for this little test circuit down here to quantify what the unloaded Q was, is to use a 330 picofarad capacitor in parallel with a 30 puff variable trim pot. I say again, yeah, uh, uh, variable capacitor, I should say. So in terms of, this is the circuit I had set up, so I had a, uh, a very, very small uh, capacitor on the input and the output just to make sure I wasn't loading things up. Um, it was around just under a half a picofarad for those two. And there goes our inductor there. And there goes those two capacitors I mentioned. I uh, excited that uh, circuit with 6.04 megahertz and I scoped the output and just very slightly tweaked. The, the, the way I decided to do it was just to slightly tweak that um, capacitor there just to um, no, I didn't, sorry, my apologies, I didn't do that actually. I uh, had that set to resonate, and then I varied the input frequency just subtly to get down to that minus 3 dB point. Uh, and then from there, I could work out what my um, my Q was here. So unloaded Q was our frequency of oscillation divided by the, that bandwidth. So the higher frequency minus the lower frequency. And it came out as an unloaded Q of 215. Um, the only other thing, the only other inputs I need to throw into the, the design calculations is to come out with the minus 3 dB points for the actual filter itself. And I elected to go slightly beyond the upper and lower limits of the actual band I was looking for. So I went down to 5.8 and to 6.3. I just add another um, 0.1 megs to the upper and lower limit. Just to, I guess an attempt to try and have it as flat as I could um, at the at the desired pass band of 5.9 to 6.2. Now I don't intend to go through these formulas here. Um, I just basically used what was provided in various uh, books for working them out. 
Um, like I say, I'll put this all up on, on the blog, but suffice to say, we work at our, 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 our omega naught, which is our frequency of oscillation. Um, so it's a geometric mean there. We work out this overall capacitance, again using our values of inductance we know, and now our, our, our omega naught, which we just derived. We can work out, work out our loaded Q, and then we end up coming up with, starting to, to generate some of those um, values up here. So C12, for example, um, here it goes down here, comes out to be 21.6 picofarads. I elected to use a 30 picofarad trimmer capacitor, and then as you'll see at the end, I um, use that to tweak the overall passband. Again, no point, me, no, point, no point me reading these out, but uh, QJ, now J of course, um, because it's two poles, um, uh, is N equals 1 or N equals 2, or J equals 1 and J equals 2. Comes out with those various values there. Uh, QEJ, like I say, um, so that's our desired load resistance for the, both the, uh, the input and the output. Is derived by that comes out at 1.326 kilohertz, but as I just said, we want to utilise uh, these two capacitors here at the input and the output to transform um, that uh, down to uh, 50 ohms, uh, and that's how we do it. There, we plug into that formula, and we come out with a um, a capacitor for the input and output of 104 picofarads. Um, I elect to just to use 100 picofarads out of the junk box, and then. The, the last calculation which is, is worked out is the value of the capacitors that sit um, across uh, the two inductors, uh, which is that overall capacitance we had at the very beginning, uh, minus those two values here, comes out at 242 picofarads. So I elected to use a 220 uh, puff capacitor, um, and that should be a zero there, in parallel with the 30 picofarad variable. Uh, I then used the trusty I'm actually finding this really useful. I don't know if anybody else has got one of these, but um, quite a really inexpensive little vector network analyzer. Um, not too bad, really. So I use that to to basically tweak the uh, the three trimmer capacitors, the two that were in parallel with the inductors, and then this one here. And um, I tweak that to get the overall response to be, uh, like I said, uh, nice and flat across that 5.9 to 6.2 megahertz. Uh, with as minimal ripple as possible. Uh, and the overall insertion gain turned out to be minus 1.2 dB, so uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, and that's all I did, and that's exactly what you see over there. So, um, yeah, very happy with that, so that was good. And I should be using that spreadsheet more often for other projects. Okay, so next thing in the circuit was, coming out of that bandpass filter, was a uh, what I just notionally called uh, an RF amplifier. Just giving that bit of a, a tickle up before feeding it into um, into the mixer just here. Uh, that was pretty well the same um, J310 or the, the the Casco J310 amplifier that I used for the the VFO in the box there. So again, two J310s in uh, Casco format. Um, what I elected to do, right or wrong, is just have a hundred K input. Uh, resistor on that, that lower J310 uh, just to try and minimize any loading on that um, on that bandpass filter. Again, right or wrong. Uh, the second gate here has got a variable DC applied to it just to set the overall gain for this stage here. Uh, that was a series 15k ohm resistor in series with a 10k trim pot. Um, so if this uh, wipe arm here was at the, at the most extreme position here, um, what I don't want to do is apply a whole sort of 13.8 volts to that, so we've got a bit of a voltage divider here. Um, so there goes the formula, 13.8 times 10k over 10k plus 15k equals 5.52 volts. So that's the maximum amount of voltage if this was the up here being applied to that gate, uh, which coincides with maximum gain for the overall stage. Um, I won't go into this. Uh, you'll know from a previous video that that batch of J310s, I went through and measured um, what the, the, the pinch-off voltage was for that batch and the IDSS, uh, so minus 2.1 and 32 milliamps. So I've been using those values pretty well consistently now for, like I say, any amplifier I build um, with those 
J310s. So plugging into there to work out what our uh, source resistance is. Plugging those values in comes out at 92 ohms, so I'm going to use the nearest standard value of 100 ohms. And that's all I did for that amplifier there. Um, well, I should say, actually, slightly wrong. Uh, the only last thing I did was, was to match, uh, where's it gone? Here it is, was to match um, the 1250, so sort of as a, um, a rule of thumb, as a, uh, as a load uh, impedance for or resistance for this particular device here. So I matched 1250 through to, to 50 ohms. Um, so again, so N then equals the square root of the impedance ratio, comes out at 5, and I elected to use on an FT37-43, 20 turns to 4 turns. So 20 divided by 4 equals our, our 5. And that's it. So next up, after the SBL1, so we've now mixed our incoming, uh, let's say, 6 megahertz signal. We've mixed it with our, our newly derived uh, VFO, which I had to change, which I mentioned in the previous video, uh, and outputting our 9 megahertz uh, intermediate frequency, which is now going to start going up the IEF strip through the filter and then back down the other side. So all three IF amplifiers, so the first one, which is on the input side of the crystal filter, the second one and the third one uh, are all identical apart from the matching transformers for the inputs and the outputs. So you'll see here that uh, what I've changed uh, is based on a, a previous, some previous work was to uh, set that gate resistance again, yeah, the, the gate resistance for the lower J310 to 2.2k ohms. 100 ohms is the same because it's using the same formula. Uh, that variable voltage divider there um, is exactly the same with a 15k ohm resistor with the 10k trim pot feeding that second um, J310. And again, once again, a 10 ohm uh, decoupling capacitor uh, from the 30.8 volt uh, VCC rail. So, in terms of T1 and T2, um, this was the overall strip for the, the IF, so output of the mixer into the first IF, crystal filter, second IF, and then th or second intermediate frequency amplifier, and the third one. And uh, these numbers here signify the, uh, or the, the resistance, I'll ignore the, the imaginary part, uh, for the uh, impedance transformation. So 50 ohms to 2.2k, the output of which will then be t uh, 1250 through to the uh, crystal filters 1k ohm input. The output 1k ohm to the input of the, of the next mixer, say again the next amplifier, 2.2k, uh, and so forth and such like. Um, and again, I don't want to bore you to tears with going through all the, uh, the calculations, but again, they will all be up in the blog. Uh, but these were, were the various transformers, these are the various ends, and therefore what I decided to use, all using an FT37-43. Um, so that takes us through to, to this point here. We've been through the bandpass filter, RF amp, the mixer. We've now got our 9 megahertz through the filter, through the first, or the second IF amp I should say, through the second one and then through a little orange wire there leaping across into this little board here which is the envelope detector. So I'll just jump to the second page and I'll go back to the first one. As we know from an amplitude modulated signal um, we have our, our very high frequency carrier which is being amplitude modulated by our, our modulating signal or um, our intelligence. So what I want to do is I want to be able to recover this, uh, this envelope and get rid of any DC value and this high frequency RF. I don't need that. All I want is a varying DC at this rate here that I can then feed into my um, into my audio frequency amplifier and put it out the speaker. So, in terms of the envelope detector, I decided to keep things nice and simple. Didn't go for a, a charge pump or anything. Um, I haven't played around with these things before, so. Uh, it was uh, quite interesting. So what, what I'd like to do, um, some looking around, uh, 5k ohms for the input resistor to bleed off any DC seems to be, from what I can gather, a, 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 not a far off value. Um, 
I did try a variable resistor there, and 10k certainly worked fine. Um, anything sort of down below 1k, you started to, as you could imagine, as that resistance there gets less and less, you're starting to shunt more and more of your input signal to ground and, and not getting so much going this way. Um, and you'll you sort of know too that 10k is quite often used for things like volume controls and the like. So um, yeah, 5k is not too far off. So that 5k there is to, to bleed off any DC uh, that's been generated at this point here. Um, I had in the junk box some OA91s, some germanium diodes, um, which are ideally suited for this, this type of detector. Um, 4148s um, and some of the silicon ones are really not suitable at all. But here, very low um, forward, voltage, forward resistance and, and works well in this particular environment. And then we have the CR time constant here. We've got this, this capacitor which is shunting that RF to earth because we don't want that, um, that RF to just point it out. We want, to, we want to get rid of all this high component. But we don't want that um, capacitor to suck to earth, also our, our, um, our intelligence. So we need to have a, uh, that capacitor sort of um, with a long enough CR time constant that um, it's faithfully following that intelligence. So what I elected to do is the input here I use the signal generator to feed in um, a uh, 9 megahertz amplitude modulated signal and then I had the oscillosc oscilloscope sitting over here and what I did is I I set this to be 10 nanofarads which uh, from looking around seemed to be a, a, a happy medium from some values that I've seen so went with a nice easy 10 nanofarads and then I varied this resistance here using a variable resistor to like I say get a scope output which was nicely following the intelligence as opposed to just sort of if, if, the, if the time constant was too long getting charged up and then slowly discharging, charged up again, slowly discharging, as opposed to actually just charging at a rate that followed um, our intelligence. Um, so that's what I like to do, and uh, it worked out really well, actually. So I'm quite happy with, um, with the way that worked out. And that is basically about it. So um, I won't go into the audio frequency amplifier because um, there is a previous video that looks at that particular push-pull one, but um, suffice to say, yeah, it's been an interesting exercise actually. It, uh, the whole idea was to scratch an itch, and the itch was to scratch, or the, the, the itch I wanted to scratch was all around this um, this VFO here. Um, you'll notice that there's a subtle difference here. Um, I've got a, um, a smaller value inductance. Um, the, the original inductor is still there, but it's now out of circuit, uh, and I had to use this one because uh, I needed to get my uh, output for the VFO up to uh, 14 megahertz as opposed to um, a much lower value that I had uh, in the original circuit when I had that um, that different crystal filter. But suffice to say, I managed to uh, find a good combination of, uh, of inductance and several capacitors down here uh, to give me the, um, the, the range of, from a tuning point of view for the overall radio, uh, that sort of 5.9 to 6.2 megahertz, uh, which is what I was after. Um, and that is probably about it. So, like I say, that, the whole idea was to scratch that itch. It was just sort of quite fun to play around with the uh, envelope detector. Um, I hadn't used one of those before, uh, mainly sort of dealing with CW and, um, and uh, single sideband. Um, nothing spectacular with that push-pull audio frequency amplifier there. Uh, and that's about it. Sort of a bit, sort of a bit messy. I'll tidy this up in due course. But in terms of experimenting, um, it was quite fun uh, and an enjoyable little project. Okay, well I'll say 73s and leave it there. And uh, like I say, tidy this up. And then I've got a couple of other projects I want to start working on. So all fun and games. Anyway, cheers all. 73s. Take care. Be good.